I've been mining Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies for over six months in that thing. It's a plug and play Bitcoin crypto mining container. Today, I wanna to run through the highs, the lows, and just my whole experience that I've had mining with this thing. Was it worth it? Would I do it again? How much does it cost? Where do you get it? How many miners can I run through it? And have I had any problems? Spoiler, yes. And what are they? How have I either fixed them or tried to fix them? My name is Vosk. Bam, it's on the shirt. You're on the Vosk on YouTube channel. Let's dig into it. So to start with a brief introduction, also check out this article I wrote this morning where I basically have a written review of this digital shovel mini pod m300 this is the video review but hey why not read along and follow your boy on medium i say it's a plug and play bitcoin mining container and largely it is but it's not a customized shipping container it's a custom built metal building these are built at the digital shovel factory which is led by scott johnson in canada last year i approached scott and i was like hey scott finally building out my mining farm what if we reviewed the M300. He said sure, came down and dropped one off. The initial impressions are wow, so cool, right? I mean, it's unique looking, it's fun, it's big, but actually pretty compact, and it just makes a statement. We have these three intake hoods on the front, and there's six filters in each of them. They're 24 by 24 by four. And if you're wondering, if you just jump on Amazon to buy the replacements, that's gonna cost you a cool 330. On the other side, we have exhaust fans. We have four 15,000 CFM exhaust fans here, pulling some serious air. I've got my power rack over here, which I'll dive into in a second. You may notice one of those is off. Unfortunately, my fan motor just went bad. To enter the shovel, you're going to need the code as well as the key. And look at that clever icon I put on that thing, come on. When you open the pod, you're met with a lot of noise and immediate airflow. We can see the air filters over here we just talked about. They're secured by these little metal pieces. You take that off, this comes up, you can replace those filters. One of the really cool things about this pod design is going to be the custom shelves that they build. They build those in-house. It's rolled metal and it allows you to throw all these miners on top of it. Inside the digital shovel, there's two smart PDUs and they, were, they allow for uh, remote rebooting, they monitor power, and they perform a lot of functions. They can even cycle the fans so you're not always running the fans, uh, the same fan all the time, or if it gets hotter, it, it could turn an additional fan on to get closer to the, the recommended or your target temperature. Ultimately, it's pretty simple though, right? We have a cold side, we have a hot side, air is flowing through, we plug miners in, they run, they get cooled with this, and they're in a secure facility right there. And it's not watertight, but it's because some water does get in there, but it just ends up on the floor and it has not negatively impacted any miners yet. One of the things I noticed is I need to drill out the drain holes because they either have mud caked up in them or they uh, just had some pain in them uh, from the factory, just kind of, you know, dripping the hole or whatever. My power situation is pretty simple. I've got a 400 amp service right here and it feeds right into the building and I'm running 200 amps to each side. This is a 208 volt prototype version that Digital Shovel made. And because it's 208, basically you can rig it up with three phase and I'm running a hot hot and a neutral or basically I can operate it at two thirds capacity to put, that, that's kind of the simple way to put it. Watch the Voscoin electricity guide if you're new to electricity and mining and stuff like that. If that confuses you, but you wanna do this, consult a electrician, it's pretty simple. And you can see when we take the panel off, we've got these three lines running into the PDU and that's the hot, hot neutral that basically gives us 240 voltage, single phase and two thirds capacity. That's why when you look at the PDU, the bottom third on each of them cannot be used. One of the issues with the single phase aspect of this is gonna be the fact uh, that this needed unique software and that was never written uh, for the prototype. Uh, my fans don't cycle to reduce wear. Uh, they don't open based on temperature. And it's not very easy to configure a way to basically remote into this and remotely power cycle the miners. So, so in my situation, the smart PDU ultimately ended up as a dumb PDU. Not the biggest deal, 
but it was a little frustrating but this is not the normal experience if you have the normal 415 voltage version uh, then you have all those features Scott has also been developing a new PDU, which is why this prototype PDU was, I guess, basically abandoned. Uh, it's a PDU that can do single phase as well as three phase electricity. So he's going to have one PDU across his lineup, which, you know, from a business owner point of view, uh, you know, that's that's very simple and makes a lot of sense. I had another issue with my prototype PDU, basically one of the terminals that was not something we touched with the install was loose. So the loose connection was allowing the power to ramp up and it would trip the 350 amp breaker and it would trip that before it would ever trip my 200 amp breaker on the main panel but i believe this caused damage and partially melted my 200 amp main breaker eventually we figured this out with troubleshooting uh, we tightened that down and that pdu has been running great for a couple months now we replaced the 200 uh, amp main breaker on the service panel and everything has been good that was a very frustrating issue that i dealt with that was hard to troubleshoot and when i contacted digital shovel about it it was hard for them to deal with it because this isn't a pdu they have any more of they are working on a new different version and they have their existing old version but there was nothing that could be subbed for me in this scenario right around that same time one of the switches failed in here there's two network switches they're cisco switches and a piece of one failed it just wasn't working so in my immediate frustration then i went ahead and just subbed it out with an alternative uh because bma came out helped me it was helping me troubleshoot the pod in general and they helped me find and fix the loose terminal and we swapped the switch at that same time and again you may wonder did you contact digital shovel what happened on that front later on it was discussed if i would have asked that he would have sent me a replacement but the bottom line is when it comes to a mining farm downtime is killer downtime is the kiss of death uh, so I can't have my miners down because of a bad PDU or a bad switch. So I, I got to get out here. I got to get my hands dirty and I got to get this stuff fixed and situated because I've been working on building out the Voscoin mining farm. We have a dedicated building right here behind me uh, for hard drive mining. And then the gray shed behind me, which was originally planned to be the next air cooled mining shed. Uh, when I got the pod, I, so I got this in December of 2022. And so I halted my plans to make this an air-cooled facility uh, just because I, I had that and I was focused on getting the pod going and filled up. And I'm like, well, why am I, let, let me just change gears and, 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 you know, fixate on that and I'll come back to the mining shed. Well, now, long story short, this just became the immersion mining shed. So that's cool and fun. Um, and I'm focusing on liquid mining in that building. And by separating all these, it gives me full control of what I'm doing and, and so forth without going on a, a huge rant or tangent. So, you know, that's a bare bones, uh, you know, Amish built shed, two by six construction. Um, it's great for liquid cool mining. It's simple, it's purpose built, it's functional. Uh, the, the green shed, the hard drive shed actually has a mini split on it. Uh, and so that is re in reality a mini uh, data center. So I'm cooling that. But it's a waste of money to cool ASIC miners when you can just use air and, and, have, and run fans for much more economical cooling. So it's basically either go immersion mining and, and liquid mine with Bitcoin miners or do air cool mining like the pod has. With the four fans on the back, uh, they move about 1500 CFM each and they consume about 3000 watts in total. Unfortunately, one of those fan motors just went bad. Check the fuse, did some quick tro troubleshooting, contacted digital shovel. They said they're going to send a replacement or an upgrade. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. The bottom line is I'm in Virginia. We're entering the cooler months here. So this is kind of fine. I mean, it's I don't need all four fans right now. Uh, it was good timing for an issue in a way. Uh, and I, I just, you know, <laughs> I, I joked in the article that I wrote, I'm just kind of like an unlucky guy with some things like this. Uh, but, you know, being a prototype unit, uh, I don't want to be as super critical. But all I have with this is my you know real experience and you know for reference depending on when you buy this the market conditions the volume at which you buy um, and any kind of promotions like you, we have a link with them and you get a discount for using our link on top of anything else they have going on but this is roughly a twenty thousand dollar structure and by the time you diy something yeah you could diy something similar cheaper but there's a huge value factor for some of the components that are used here all metal construction the fact that it's plug and play i mean you can order 10 of these and they have a door on the side that's like a blank 
So we have an actual metal door right here, and then they have a blank door on the other side. And so in my situation, I just put the service panel here and we punch through the blank and above it. Uh, but right here, you just stack another one and another one and another one, and you could just deploy a row of 10 of these. And depending on your model, you can deploy a bunch of miners. For me, I can deploy about 22 full-size current generation ASIC mining rigs. That is an S19 or something similar. Uh, these are miners that are expected to consume around 3,000 watts. I can push it a little bit over that, but I like to dummy proof it. Simply put, I can run 22 miners in there. And I have not done the wire management. I mean, it looks terrible. Everybody laughs at me and makes fun of me, whatever. I, I get that, uh, but I I've been troubleshooting this thing. I've been changing around my mining hardware. I mean, so many things have been changing. And uh, so at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and dedicate 22 slots for 22 miners, run the power cables, cause there's cable management trays on, on the fronts of the, the shelves if you look closely, and uh, run the ethernet cables in a nice and tidy way. And this thing is gonna look good. And I'm just gonna leave it that way forever. I know these power cables work. I know that this is my capacity. I know that these ethernet cables work, done and I'm just gonna let it rip. I really cannot understate how excited I am for them to release a dedicated single phase model. That will help so many more smaller and medium scale miners get into this, especially, you know, no matter what your electrical situation, you can deploy this if you want to do so. So that's really cool to hear uh, that they're working on that. It's supposed to be soon. They showed their nanopod at my, the Mining Disrupt uh, conference this year. And the nanopod is basically half the size and capacity essentially of this so this i've deployed 400 amps on single phase that thing can do 200 amps you know either on single phase or three phase electricity or simply put it can run about 12 miners in there digital shovel is also reportedly working on a similar con mining container to this uh but it's not the m300 it's the s300 it's a revised version of the m300 as well as an immersion mining container which is basically this but they're going to utilize uh you know immersion tanks it's going to be liquid cooling in there as opposed to air cooled as you see here overall getting up and running with this thing wasn't too bad with the way i had to rig this up on single phase uh digital shovel had no documentation so i had to work through that with my electrician thankfully i have a good problem solving electrician that i work with uh so he we were able to uh you know work through this um and we did call scott who is again the owner of digital shovel and ask him some questions so it was cool that you know he did take the time to take our call and help us work through this but he also wanted a review so that's kind of expected i mean he even came down when it was delivered which was a cool and fun experience we were actually hanging out right around there at one point it was freezing that day too gosh it's really been an interesting experience mining with the digital shovel there's some really cool touches like i mean they stamped their logo into the intake hoods like just from like a product manufacturing point of view like those little touches are cool it's fun it's kind of premium I mean, they have their designs that are not always just uh, for looks, but some of the things they do actually add to the structural integrity of this basically small metal building. I have had a bumpy road, but I've been able to troubleshoot and work through these things. And I do have to reiterate that I had a beta product and I thought that it was a beta product coming to release, but they switched gears and chose to go another direction. So some of these problems I have are unique problems that may have never happened with their normal 415 three-phase version or their new production version, or there would have been easier and quicker solutions. Overall, I'm happy. In the end, I've got this thing running. I've got miners deployed in there. And uh, I mean, that's what it's here for. That's all I can ask. And uh, you know, I mean, it, it is cool. It, it's fun, it's exciting. So to answer the question, like, is it worth it, right? I mean, I'd say, yeah, if you don't want to DIY it. DIYing something is an incredibly fun experience if you get into it. If DIYing it is a huge chore and you can afford and you have the budget to buy something that's more along the lines of plug and play, then that may be a better option for you. Depending on how big you are, your mining operation you're building or considering building, things like that. I mean, it was just a sliding scale. How much can you realistically do? Or if you start subbing out and hiring out, you know, you're going to pay more and more and more for that DIY. That, that DIY is really just going to be custom contracted. You'll be surprised how quickly that adds up. So as always, it's just going to be your decision. You're going to have to run the numbers, look at your personal scenario, and as always, do what you want to do. 
I do think their new nanopod that can run on single phase or three phase electricity and is a 200 amp configuration and uh, Digital Shovel has, has said they're going to offer a DIY package of it. It's going to be shipped in pieces and then assembled on site. will create a much lower price point than what these cost. So that I think will hit a much wider market on the smaller scale side of mining. This sizing is actually exactly along the lines of what I was looking for. Uh, the smaller one is, is interesting, it's useful. I want to deploy one of those, if for nothing else, in science and the fact that I'm for some crazy reason addicted to infrastructure. Maybe it was too much Monopoly and, and Legos and, and SimCity when I was a kid, but I freaking love buildings. And, and, and it's just fun, you know, somebody made a funny comment the other day, like, what the hell is this, Animal Cross? And every time I turn around, there's just a new house popping up over there. But in all seriousness, to bring it back to the shovel, I've had a good experience with the pod. There have been some issues. I've been fortunate to be able to work through all of these things, and I cannot be mad about having some issues that I've since solved. Uh, you know, as I've eclipsed the six month mark, this has been a good experience overall. I've got miners hashing away. I mean, what more can you ask for? I hope at this point, you know, it just continues to run well. As I already mentioned, my next focus is going to be wire management. Then I need to make sure I get this thing nice and cleaned up because it just gets kind of gross over time. A lot of junk does get through the filters, especially pollen, unfortunately. Uh, that's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, there's a lot of air being moved all the time in there. and. Then I also want to go ahead and grab some sheet metal and fab up some blockers and block all the areas where I don't have miners, which will then force airflow to go exactly through the miners I am running. Right now, I'm wasting a lot of cool air that's just going all around in there instead of pushing it directly through the mining rigs I'm running. Targeted airflow means I could run less fans for the same performance and uh, they'll just simply get more air They'll run cooler, and the cooler your miners are running, the longer they will last, the higher their hash rate will be, and the lower their power consumption will be. It's pros across the board. Unless it's like absolutely freezing. But in Virginia, it's not really a problem I have too often. Looking at this and trying to think of anything I possibly missed, I mean, uh, when we had the install, you know, this comes on a 18-wheeler. You need a forklift off on site, you know, so that was an expensive rental. Uh, you know over a thousand dollars to get one over here and uh i need that and we insert the forks we take it off we put it down uh and so you need that for the installation that's a bit of a hurdle on the door if you notice that piece at the that little silver piece at the top that is a magnet uh so that's a magnetic lock door as well as a physical lock door so the keypads uh, uh drops the magnet and then the key you know removes basically the the, the locking uh, mechanism and uh, there's a security system on there, uh, so you can use the security system if you'd like. I already have an on-site security system, but that's great if you don't have anything. And there's a nice touch on the inside where they have these light bars that run across, and they provide great lighting in there to allow you to do anything you need to do. As far as, you know, setting up miners, wire management, cleaning, whatever. Uh, I would like a switch on them, uh, but they don't have a switch, so I just let them run forever because they're LEDs. and. It's not that much power and they'll last a long time. So that's all I got. If you have any questions, anything you're wondering about or you feel like I missed in this video, uh, please comment down on the comment section below here on YouTube. Uh, again, please check out the article and share the video in the article if you like this at all or if you wanna uh, you know, think a buddy could use this or maybe get into mining or you guys just wanna make fun of me like I'm that crazy guy on YouTube. Whatever, I don't care, okay? You think I've been doing this for years and some hater could stop me? A lot of people want to talk crap. Why don't you get in the trenches and do something? That's where I live in the trenches. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and pull myself out of the trenches. Go check on my beautiful puppy. It's tail. She recently celebrated her eighth birthday. I'm gonna say that for a couple weeks, uh, but I absolutely love that pup and it's crazy. She just turned eight. Uh, I'm so thankful for every year I get with her. And uh, I'm thankful if you're still watching this video. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, comment. Please comment questions you have that I missed because I tried to be all encompassing in this six month review, but I think maybe the only thing else I didn't talk about are the actual miners I'm running in there. But I don't think that's all that important uh, for this review. And I've talked about that in other videos. I mean, the bottom line is like 22 of current generation miners. You can just consider them 
you know, 22 Bitcoin miners, S19s. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of different models in there that mine some other coins as well, like an L7 mining Dogecoin and so forth. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got, and I uh, hope to see you on the next video. Bye.